Where you ever wronged in your life? Did you ever want to take revenge? Well, there are certain subreddits on Reddit that show you how pros do revenges. And this is Arschle's nuclear revenge. And this is when a pro goes nuclear. And this story is called Try to do drugs and rip an innocent girl at a party? No, not while I'm here. And this story actually got taken off pro revenge. Because this revenge went nuclear. Let's get right into it. So, to put it simple, I was a little shit as a kid. I used to steal from stores and family, swear and throw things at random people walking down the street. Was smoking from the age of 12 and didn't give a single shit about anyone but my friends. They were my real family. Or so I thought. And the group of all five of us would cause trouble every single fucking day. My parents, though in my later years, have told me they should have been more effective in their discipline. Really weren't to blame. I was just a mixed up kid. I used to think that doing all this stuff made me cool. Can't really describe how superior I felt when I made grown adults afraid of me. But it made me feel powerful. And power was something I craved when I was younger. I could go on and on about my sins, but the fact is, I was just fucked in the head. I've made amends where I can to who I could, but you're not here for self flagellation you're here for the revenge. So long story short, when I was 16, my parents finally had enough. And despite all my tantrums and screaming and, yes, even some physical violence against my dad, they decided to put me in school for troubled youth. I call it a school, but what it really was was a military institution that taught discipline in the most brutally effective ways, while throwing in some literacy and numeracy classes along the way. Without going into much detail, I'll say that this school changed me. While aggressive, violent, cocky and near homicidal when I was first dumped on death doorstep, the man who ran this camp broke me down. I was there for just over a year. No phone calls, no visits home, no access to the outside world. For one whole year, I had this camp and these counselors, these real life hard as men, teach me just how much of a shit stain I really was. By the end of my second summer, I was a changed kid. I had fought and screamed and gotten my ass kicked more times than I could count, but eventually I was beaten down. These men taught me the real men simply don't act the way I did, and that the type of path I was headed down would lead me either in jail or dead. They were brutally honest about it. Especially this one counselor, Jay. By the end of my stay, I considered Jay a second father, though I hated him at first for making me feel inferior. He really did me a favor, teaching me how toxic my behavior really was. And to this day, I still think of him as something of a hero. He was the main person who deemed me ready to return home. But the backstory is getting really long, so... Let's get to the real story. When I returned home, I had changed from an abusive little prick to a somewhat civilized young man, ready to take on my last year of high school. I was nervous to go back, since I had adapted to the disciplinary school lifestyle. But I was also excited. I missed my friends and hoped they would just accept me back, despite the fact that I hadn't spoken to them 
in over a year. To my relief, I was accepted back with open arms. One of my closest friends had moved states since I'd been away, but the other three were ecstatic to see me. Over the next few weeks, I settled down. Didn't spend a lot of time with them outside of school. My parents were testing how much I'd matured since returning, and were setting boundaries on when I could go out, how long I could stay out, and where I could go, etc. I was determined to prove them I wasn't the same fuck-up that had ruined their lives all those years. So I followed their rules, and so only really talked to my friends during school. All of this is relevant because of what happened next. I had joined the school football team all three friends were a part of, and one evening after practice all my teammates were in the gym. Sweaty, dirty, but pleased with ourselves. I was laughing and chatting with all my three best friends, so much I didn't really notice that we were the last left in the gym. But that's when the conversation started turning bad. One of my friends, I called him F1 for simplicity, started telling me about a college party they were all planning on going to, and how they'd been crashing college parties for a few months now, since it was easy access to girls and booze. I was hesitant about it, because I didn't think my mom and dad would agree to let me go. But then F1 started talking about this girl he was planning on inviting. A girl who went to the same school as us, but no one thought F1 had any relationship with. I knew her, but I, I didn't know her. He started to tell both my other friends and me that he'd been trying to get her into bed for a while, and she kept making excuses. And so he planned on taking her to the party and finally smash. When I asked him in a joking way, what makes you so sure she won't reject you again? He looked me dead in the eye and said as casually as you please the most chilling sentence I've ever heard in my entire life. Uh, I'm just gonna slip something in a drink, loosen her up, no problem. At first, I just kind of awkwardly laughed, thinking it was some really fucked up joke, but they weren't laughing with me. When I asked him if he was serious, he told me he was sick of her bullshit games, and knew she was just stringing him along, and that the pills would make just things easier. <laughs> Could not believe my fucking ears. I excused myself from the conversation pretty quickly and practically bolted home. Most likely driving through several stop signs, but uh, I really don't remember. I spent the whole night convincing myself my friends were just messing about. A few more days pass and the conversation in the locker room is all but forgotten. Though they hadn't shut up about the party. And kept insisting that I just sneak out and join them. Got called a pussy repeatedly for telling them I wasn't going because of my parents, but again I just brushed it off. Then... Then the shit really hit the fan. During yet another after-school training session, we all end up the last in the lockers, and have one does something I never would have expected in a thousand fucking years. All three of them have been talking about the party this whole time, and then F1 starts rummaging through his gym bag. He tells us all to Look at this, and tosses F to a small bag of little pink pills. Immediately I feel the blood drain from my face. 
had like a bomb going off in my head. A voice in my mind screaming, Holy shit, this is really happening, this is serious. Holy shit! It's really hard to describe what I was feeling when F1 started going into detail about how he planned on inviting the girl to the party. Slipping something into a drink and making use of one of the frat boys' bedrooms for a few hours. I was sick. Like, literally. Could have hurled everything from my stomach all over the floor as I listened to the th all three of them talk about how awesome the party was going to be after just describing how they were planning to rape a girl. Couldn't take it. Again, I ran off. <laughs> I actually did end up puking later that night. Going over and over in my head what the fuck I had just witnessed. I almost couldn't believe it. These three boys had been my friends for 15 years. I thought of them as my own family. Thought I knew them better than anyone. But one year away... And this? I'll tell you that I actually broke down crying that night. Not ashamed to admit it. What I'm ashamed of is how long it took me to actually get a grip at handle it. I knew I should have told someone. But in some fucked up way, my loyalties were still screwed. Don't crucify me for it. I know now what I should have done, but I was 17 and these were my best friends. Didn't want them to get into trouble. But at the same time, I knew I couldn't let this shit go down. So instead of reporting all I'd heard to an adult like a normal fucking person, I decided I'd sort it out all on my own. So I went to F1, told him not to do what he had planned, told him it was stupid and dangerous and would ruin both his life and the life of the girl he was planning on drugging. He didn't even blink. Got right in my face and told me that the school I got sent to had turned me into a pussy. That he hated how much I changed and had been trying to change me back with F2 and F3. Even told me how they'd been talking about me behind my back and how they'd planned to give me a turn on the girl once F1 was done with her. Just to show me what I was missing out on. Then he said something I'll never forget. He told me, word for word. Dude, I'm doing that little bitch a favor. She's a fucking virgin. And after this party, your mom won't be the only one finally getting some. <laughs> I punched him. We fought and we both got sent home on suspension for fighting. I couldn't fucking believe it. I was seething. My best friend had said to me, my best friend had told me he was going to rape an innocent girl at a party and I was a pussy for not wanting to join in? I was disgusted, sickened to my core, and I was done with it. My parents were disappointed I had gotten suspended so shortly after coming home, but... I just sat quietly while my mom cried and my dad screamed at me. I don't know that I should have told him, but after what F1 said to me, I had this insane notion in my head that I was going to get him back all on my own. <laughs> and now, to the revenge. After a weekend of being grounded, I went back to school. The first thing I did was seek out F1. He was about as bashed up as I was, but he was sporting a nice black eye from where I'd hit him in the face. F2 and 3 were standing with him, and they all glared at me as I approached them. Then I did something that made me feel sick. I apologized. I told him I was sorry I hit him, and that he was right. I had changed, and I hated what the school had done to me. I wanted to go back to being the old me again. Surprisingly, they all brought it. 
F1 and I even hugged it out and I put the cherry on top and I told them I'd be coming to the party. Now for my dumbest teenage plan. First I started recording them whenever we were alone together. I wanted to get everything they said about the party and the girl they were planning on victimizing on tape. I knew I needed some kind of proof. Or it would just be my word against theirs and after a few days I had gotten more than enough. But I wasn't done. No. My stupid self had a plan and I was going to fulfill it to the fullest. So the next thing I did was track down the girl, take her aside and tell her everything. Damn she was pissed and scared but I begged her not to go to the police or tell anyone. I know now that that was stupid as well but for some reason she listened to me. I had a plan. Crazy stupid plan to teach them all a lesson. So I told her to tell F1 that she was going to meet him at the party, but just stay home, so she could stay safe. And later that day F1 started bragging about how the girl had accepted his invitation and everything was going to plan. And I sat there, phone half out of my pocket, recording the whole damn thing. So night of the party finally rolls around and I sneak out, because, you know, I was grounded. I think it's worth mentioning that I wasn't filled with vindication and self-righteousness throughout the whole night. I was second-guessing myself. Doubts. But in some strange way, I felt betrayed. These three boys had been my brothers since before I could throw a punch, and I felt betrayed that they had gone down this road. What fucked me in the head even more was the possibility that I might have been just like them if my parents hadn't sent me away. It was a strange moment of realization to come into the middle of a crowded frat house surrounded by drunk idiots, but you take what life throws at you. So the night goes on and F1 is getting steadily more frustrated the girl he invited hadn't shown up. I made sure to keep him in my sights for the whole night, not wanting him to decide that any old girl would do if he couldn't take the one he wanted. I kept an eye on all of them, watching as they drank and drank, while I stayed as level-headed as possible with some water in a beer can. When midnight came, all three of them were plastered, and I knew that all the girls at the party would be safe by then. By this time the crowd was dying down, and a few people who couldn't hold their liquor were already passed out around the house. Now was my time to shine. While all three of them were occupied with a drinking game, I hunted in F1's bag and found the bag of little pink pills. Here's where I did something I'm not practically proud of, but I'll tell you anyway. I slipped one pill into three beers each and handed them to my friends and then waited. It didn't take long before all three were passed out on the floor, along with quite a few other party guests. I then took out a black permanent marker pen from my bag and wrote rapist on all three of their foreheads took pictures and immediately uploaded them to our school's Facebook page. So everyone who attended our school would see. Admittedly, I didn't really think this part through, since I not only did this in full view of every other conscious person at the party, but also knew the photos wouldn't last long on the school site before they would be taken down. But since it was a small school in a small town, I didn't doubt that a whole bunch of people would see it before a teacher removed the photos. And that's exactly what I wanted. Next came the recordings. When I got home, I got a verbal bludgeoning from my parents for sneaking out, but they stopped when I finally told them what had been happening. They were both shocked and a little disbelieving. But when I played them both the recordings I'd saved on my phone, they were just as sickened as I was. I was silent in the car as my dad drove me to the police station, receiving a lecture about how I should have just come to him in the first place, and what I'd done at the party wasn't necessary. 
but I felt like it was at the time. My phone had already blown up with other students commenting on the pictures of my three former friends with rapists written on their foreheads. And while a lot just laughed at them, many were questioning if there was any truth to it. It was what I wanted. I wanted everyone to know who they really were, so they had nowhere to hide. The hours at the police station were admittedly very scary. I was still debating with myself whether or not I did the right thing, but my um, <clears throat> friends had chosen their own fate. I still felt hurt and betrayed they'd allowed themselves to become this way. And even though I felt a little guilt for potentially ruining their future, I did what I thought had to be done. Long story short, the recordings were enough to get them all on charges on planning to commit a crime. Since the girl F1 had been planning on drugging, had been named, her parents were understandably furious and demanded all three of my ex-friends to be arrested. I would have been too, were not for the girl telling her parents and the courts that I had warned her to stay away from F1 and the party. I was charged for my use of an illegal substance, since I admitted to using the pills on my three ex-friends, and also for battery, since the permanent marker was seen as a form of assault, but luckily I never got jail time. I did get a boatload of community service though. All three of them were tried as adults in a case of attempted rape, but only a one got actual jail time. Since he was the one who'd gotten the pills and was the only one who admitted to wanting to use them. The other two only got probation and community service for being accessories, but were completely shunned in our town. No one ever let them forget. Honestly, I was prepared for the backlash. Ready to be jumped by them or something, but... Strangely enough, I think seeing F1 go to jail for what he did knocked some sense into the two of them. And they wised up enough to actually get into college without football scholarships. Since they were both kicked off the team. They never came anywhere near me again, which surprised me. But I also no longer cared. In my mind, my friends were dead to me long before all this went down. And by the time I moved away to college, it was all behind me. I'm in my final year of college now, and I still think about those three sometimes. I think about how, if my parents hadn't sent me to the special school, I may have ended up just like them. Oddly enough, I do miss them at times, but I know it's the memory of the kids I miss, not the men they turned into. I thank my parents countless times for sending me to that place and even got some approval from Jay when I felt man enough to tell him what happened. I don't know what will happen to F1 when he gets out of jail, but part of me hopes he learns his lesson and moves on with his life, like I have. Jay called me a few days ago just to check up, and I told him this whole story, which is kind of why I'm now telling him on the internet. I guess the moral of to stand up to your friends when you know they're doing wrong. But maybe not in the stupid way I did. Always involve others more qualified to deal with situations you're not sure about. Even if you're a headstrong, stubborn as fuck teenager who thinks you know everything. <laughs> TLDR. Three old fans of mine plan to rape a girl at a party. So I exposed them to the whole town get one friend thrown in jail. Now th that revenge went nuclear. I love it when these nuclear revenges are not only semi-realistic, but also get someone in so much fire that you just feel schadenfreude, as we Germans like to say it. And I hope you enjoyed the story as well. But before we end the video, here's my merch plug and my Patreon, yay! I don't, I don't have a Raid Shadow Legends sponsor, I only have, I, I only have Patreon and merch. So, both links are down in the description, I have tiers as low as a singular dollar, and as a matter of fact, I only have a singular dollar and two dollar tiers. 
because I have no idea what the fuck I should post on Patreon. But uh, also I have a merch store. The merch is made as cheap as possible. I make like two bucks per shirt that I actually sell. The rest goes to Teespring and probably the manufacturer. So yeah, please buy something. I would greatly appreciate it. Also share this video around if you know anybody that might be interested in this story or maybe somebody that needs to learn a fucking lesson. Uh, just send it around because if you cannot pay me on my Patreon or my merch store, I would greatly appreciate it if you could pay me with cloud. All right, just send the video around. Also, thanks for watching the video until the end. That's also a really good way you can do to support me. Just watching the video until the end. Also, like and dislike, both of them do the same thing and comment something down below. Maybe comment your own revenge that you've taken down in the comments below. And if you're new here and think I'm worth it, please hit the bell icon after subscribing. This was r slash nuclear revenge. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a nice one. Goodbye.